Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Tuna Thursday starts with a Subaru Impreza from 5150 Failure. Now we've seen the Impreza, or we've seen an Impreza run before. We had a 2004 model that ran and currently sits in fourth on our table. That's very, very quick lap time. So I was expecting that perhaps this car here would also be pretty good. However, when we look at the statistics, we see a bit of a problem. Uh, this car, I think, has been a little bit unfortunate with the PI system. While the Forza PI system is, is a very good system, it's one of the best ones that there is in, in any game, there are still some times when cars are a little bit screwed over, shall we say, and this certainly seems to be one of them. The Impreza, the 04 Impreza, that sits at the top of our table, has 550 horsepower, 550 uh, foot-pounds of torque. It has the engine conversion to the 6-litre V8, so a lot of power, a lot of torque, uh, and it's still four-wheel drive, and it's got racing tyres, all in A-Class. The car that we have here has uh, 470 horsepower, 432 torque, so it's sort of 80 horsepower down, 120 torque down. Now you may be sitting there thinking, well, let's hope that it's an awful lot lighter. It is lighter, but not by very much. Only 100 pounds separates the two cars. 100 pounds difference in weight between these two vehicles, and all of that power and all of that torque difference, still the same PI. Uh, this car is in a little bit of trouble. It has the standard engine in it still, uh, but there's, there's just not enough power and enough torque to make up for, for that difference. Also, I believe that this car doesn't have race tyres. The, the 04 Impreza does. If you look in the garage, you can see cars with the... Uh, I've, I figured out when I was looking at this, uh, that cars with racing tyres or drag tyres, the sidewall of the tyres is completely smooth. Cars that have sport tyres and so on, there tends to be a little bit of detailing, if you like, on the side of the tyres. You won't be able to see it in the video but uh, because the wheels are spinning far too quickly, but uh, in the garage you can see it. I don't think this car has racing tyres. I'm pretty sure this is running on sport tyres. So it's down on power, down quite a lot on torque. It's only a tiny bit lighter and has worse tyres. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's still the same PI. It's a little bit problematic for this, uh, for this poor car. It's not a bad vehicle to drive as such. Uh, through the corner, me being four-wheel drive, you will be able to put all of the power down pretty much as soon as you want. Do we get some oversteer with this car from time to time? Yes. Uh, you can get it sliding a little bit, and that's another reason why I think this perhaps isn't running on the race tyres. It, it doesn't feel like it quite has the grip through some of the turns. And with lacking straight-line speed and acceleration, it's just about getting to 150 by the time you jump on the brakes here for the first big, big, uh, big braking zone. Uh, it's not... There's nothing terribly wrong with the car. It's just a little bit down. I may have overshot completely. That, uh, that brakes. That brakes aren't too bad. Not the most amazing thing, but uh, it's just it, it feels underpowered really uh, around this track. And we've seen that the acceleration out of the corners and in, in between in between the turns on the fairly short straights can be very important. Up next, well, we have the, uh, the Subaru versus Evo battle because we have got a uh, Mitsubishi Evo 6. Now, I do like the Evo 6s. Of all the Subarus and the Mitsubishi Evos, this is the one that I would have. I, I love the Evo 6s. They're fantastic cars. Uh, so I was excited to have a go with one of these. Statistics for this car are much better. We've got uh, 528 horsepower, uh, 381 torques, and weight is also kept down. For these sort of bigger four-wheel drive cars, certainly the four-door four -door four-wheel drive cars, uh, 2,718 pounds. That's pretty good going on uh, on the weight front. And again, we've got another four-wheel drive car, which means that you're not really worried about power delivery with this vehicle. It's pretty much turn in and boot it. Will it slide again is another one that uh, you will get the car sliding around a little bit. As you saw there, I ran very, very... I may have even brushed the wall on uh, on that one. It was, again, another quite a slidey... Uh, for a four-wheel drive car, it's a bit slidier than I expected. Uh, but if you kept your foot down, you were probably going to be okay with the <laughs> with this one. It, you, you'd, you'd survive it. I mean, it would look quite spectacular at times, but it wasn't, partic it wasn't particularly tough to drive this car. And then if you bought it down and if you were... Behind Perhaps a little bit more sensible with the car, uh, then yeah, you could get uh, some decent corner speed out of the vehicle. This was another one that wasn't particularly blisteringly fast in a straight. It had very short gear ratios, like really short gear ratios on this car. Uh, it was pretty much at the top of the sixth gear by the time we got to the end of this first straight, which is, it, it, I mean, we're not losing speed and whatever, but it does mean that there is an awful, awful lot of change in gear uh, in this car around the track. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much buzzing on the limiter here uh, as we as we come on to the braking, and it just didn't quite have the top speed. 
speed. I think it was the mid 150s, maybe 55, uh, something like that. Uh, at the at the top end, not the quickest car we've had. Lots and lots of changing gear and <laughs> some uh, some big slides out of the out of the round. Again, that roundabout we often see cars sliding through there. It's the change up from first to second, or I think it's in this case second to third. Again, here as the course falls away, the Evo wants to get a little bit. I mean, you can see they had a couple of dings on the wall, mostly from just messing about and sliding the car around. This was another corner that uh, I think that's where the damage on the uh, on the back right hand side of the car came. There, just <laughs> having fun. you can have a lot of fun with this car I have to say I did like I did like driving this one maybe not the the ultimate fastest car but it was a lot of fun to uh, to chuck around this turn and it's got a, a fairly si fairly silly win uh, on the back braking was it was okay it wasn't spectacular it was probably around the same as the Impreza to be honest uh, when it came it wasn't something yeah, it wasn't miraculous on the Evo but again it was perfectly manageable and, and quite a good fun car to drive up next we have a Honda S2000 from De Boss One Man. Now, I wasn't quite sure what to expect from this car. It was another one that I thought could potentially go quite quickly because it is a sports car. It's quite small. It's quite light. It should be relatively fast. On the statistics front, horsepower-wise, 493. Not the most powerful car we've ever had and only 337 torque, but it is still relatively light. 2,497 pounds, making it one of the lighter vehicles uh, that we have had and that makes the acceleration on this vehicle very very quick but one of the very fast accelerating cars it gets to some of the highest top speeds we've seen uh, down the straights and that's useful at a track like this while it may not be quite as quick through the corners we saw when i raced the venom and the mclaren p1 here the venom can go quicker than the mclaren because it has such phenomenal acceleration out of the corners down the shorter straights yes around a turn like this the venom may struggle more than the mclaren but because it has so much power and acceleration when it comes to any of these any of these smallish straights even long beach you know that doesn't really have any long straights the venom can still go quicker and it's the same case with this honda because it has that phenomenal acceleration out of the corners it still sets a decent lap time, and we were doing, I think it was about 163 miles an hour we were getting coming into the braking zone for this first quarter. That's that's damn fast for, for anything. That's up there with the Mura uh, in, in straight line speed. When it does come to the corners, that's when things get a little bit scary with this car. It has an incredibly lively <laughs> rear end to this. It really does like sliding around. Admittedly, that particular moment, I did hit the kerb on the inside. And hitting the kerbs around here is always dangerous, uh, of throwing the cars around. And if you hit that kerb with that, uh, that kind of angle, a lot of cars will go sideways. Maybe not quite as much as this will, but uh, a lot of cars will go sideways. It, it just does slide if you try and put the power down, as I'm about to demonstrate getting a little bit too much on the throttle and then not doing a good job of saving it. Uh, it may be pointing backwards slightly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit on the on the more difficult side to drive. I wouldn't say it was twitchy as such. It's not uh, it's not kind of suddenly going to throw you in a wall. Uh, but yeah, it's it's on the live lively is the word I'm going to go for uh, with this car. Again, in fact, it reminds me quite a lot of the TBR. Again, if you are if you are careful with it and if you get it around some corners uh, smoothly, it will be a quick car. But it's very easy to just step over that line a little bit, just push it a little bit too much, whether it be trying to put the power down or just try to take a little bit too much corner speed, and then the back end will want to step around on you. Certainly, putting the power down at the hairpin, and you will often be going very sideways, and it doesn't take much to uh, have the car pointing backwards. But uh, that phenomenal acceleration and uh, good straight line speed will uh, set the S2000 in good stead for a lap time around here. And the brakes were also very good because the car was light, the braking was good on the Honda. Speaking of TBRs, we have a Sagaris up next from a bald slaphead, and I love that game attack. That's probably the best game attack I've seen so far. Um, the Sagaris is a car that uh, I don't think you, you can't help but like the Sagaris. It's hard to dislike one of these because it's just absolutely balmy. The exhaust stick off at a silly angle, the rear wing is a rather bizarre affair, and there are more vents on this car than the abomination I made on uh, automation. It's, it's a ridiculous vehicle, and I love it. The, the Sagaris is a crazy car, um, but yeah, there's just something about it that, uh, that you like. This particular one has 474 horsepower, 363 torque. Not the highest power and torque figures, no, but it is one of the lightest cars we have had. 2,127 pounds 
That is very, very light for a sports car like this one. And then there is the normal TBR scariness when it comes to the handling. You're never quite sure what you're going to get from a... <laughs> from a TVR. Well, I believe that this one here has uh, race tyres, and I'm guessing it must have race weight reduction to get it down so light. Uh, it's still somewhat of a handful, shall we say. This is always always the case with a TVR, much like we got with the S2000. You're never quite sure if the car is going to stay on the road at, uh, at all times. Acceleration, straight line speed are very good. Another car that was getting 160 miles an hour plus, even though this had super long gear ratios. We had the Evo that was super short. This one has got very, very long gear ratios. We didn't get out fourth gear on this track. That's how, that's how long the ratios were. For most of the track, it was it used three gears, second, third, and fourth. I think sometimes I might have changed down to first out of the hairpin. Um, now, yeah, that is, they are very, very long gears. With shorter gears, we may have got uh, better, better acceleration. However, by having the little bit longer gears, it means you kind of calm the wheel spin down. In, in, in a car, because the, like we saw it with a city car build I did on a Mustang a very long time ago. Uh, it had ridiculous horsepower because the gears were so long it didn't actually spit its wheels up that much. And certainly that may help this Sagaris, because it wasn't quite the uh, swivel-eyed lunacy of a lot of TVRs. It was still on the slightly more oversteery side. Of, of things, it certainly, when you were pushing it hard through a corner, it certainly would uh, want to be stepping out on you if you weren't a bit careful uh, with the car. But yeah, it wasn't quite as crazy as you might expect from a uh, from a Sagaris. That's good. I, as I said, I, I do quite like this car. The brakes were another thing that were good on the Sagaris. You see that I was, I was pushing it on the brakes, seeing how late I could go with it. Uh, a car that weighs 2,100 pounds is probably going to be pretty damn good uh, under braking, even one that is as quick as this in a straight line. Again, we're, we're getting up to 160 plus with this car into the first braking zone. It was braking uh, about the 450-ish uh, mark, which is pretty good for, for a car with that much speed. Uh, an interesting drive, uh, had a few scary moments with the TVR, but uh, not as scary as it could have been. On to the times, and I was a little bit surprised actually to see the Honda S2000 go quickest of today's vehicles, and that is a quick time, a 124.318. It does put it into 8th place, but it's all very close at this end of the table. That is a fast time from the uh, from the S2000. We look a little further down, we find the Mitsubishi Evo 6, a 124.760, and uh, pretty damn close to that was the Sagaris with a 24 Point eight two seven. Uh, the Evo maybe lacked a little bit of, uh, of straight line speed and perhaps a tiny bit of composure from time to time. Still a relatively easy car to drive. And the Sagaris uh, was was crazy. There are a couple of times I was on for slightly faster laps than that one. Like the split tire was up and I just slid the car and lost all of the time. Yeah, Sagaris uh, had its uh, had its odd scary moments here and there. We have to go a fair bit further though to find the poor Subaru Impreza that uh, yeah is uh, is way down in twenty seventh with a 126.166. It is a little bit unfortunate, I think, the 05 Impreza that just got a little bit screwed over by the PI. Uh, it seems there's a lot, lot down on power and torque and tyres, and uh, yeah, that seems a little bit odd, but it's still the top of A-class. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate for that, but still not a bad time, though, considering how much it's down on uh, all of them things. Well, that is it for this episode, guys. Uh, entries to this competition are now closed, and next week... When, when the video goes up for next week, if your tune, if you've entered and you, your tune isn't on a storefront, uh, I'm going to start deleting entries. I went through about 15, 20 entries to find four cars for this video. So please, please, please make sure if you have entered a car that the tune is up on the storefront because after next week's video, I'm just going to be start deleting deleting entries that don't have the tune on the storefront. Anyway, that's it from me. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, uh, goodbye. Thank you.